Good day, brethren. The other day, I came across this passage in James, and it struck me deeply about how God has made salvation a deep spiritual thing that shakes the deepest parts of your soul and that we as Christians have a desire to be righteous because of his love for us he gave his son so that we can have eternal life not because we deserve it not because we are able to be the best things in the whole world but because he so loved us many people think that their salvation depends on the works they perform after their salvation and so many times they'll preach salvation in a way saying that if these certain works don't feature in your life after your salvation then that would mean that you're not saved all their preaching is uncertainty because after the person is saved then he's going to look at his own works and wonder if they are sufficient we should not never preach such a gospel we should preach to people that they can be confident in their salvation and that when they have trusted in Jesus Christ that he is able to comfort them and bring them home to Jesus so let's read the passage here in James in chapter 1 and we're looking at the verses from 12 up to 27 blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God can not be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death do not err my beloved brethren Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world we look at verse 12 Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. 
if you honor your Lord by being trustworthy in works in that when you are tried you endure that temptation then you will have the fruit of your effort in heavenly places you will see your fruit after life it will be well worth your while when you trusted in the Lord for salvation you were washed clean from all your sin and your spirit was disconnected from your flesh by the power of God and the power of the gospel something new has been created within you the sins of your flesh will not be considered in heaven one day but now in the spirit being a new creature you have the liberty to perform good works for which you will receive a crown in heaven we as saved people reside in a domain of liberty unsaved people reside still under the law of their members and they still work evil in their members we still work evil in our, in our members anybody is able to be tempted anybody is able to have an ungodly appearance which obviously isn't adequate for the Christian let's read verse 13 let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man there are people out there that believe before the foundations of the world were laid that God planned that certain people would be tempted at certain times and that he decreed with pleasure that they would battle with Satan give in and fail while well, considering verses such as these I would be very careful to come to such a conclusion let's read that again let no man say when he is tempted I'm tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man there is a lot of things that God simply doesn't do and there certainly is a sense in which God never tempts anybody the sense of temptation spoken of in this verse God never does with anybody and yet this temptation this form of temptation has been experienced by many people throughout the centuries this means that God had no hand in any of these events now which events they were we might not know exactly because there are different kinds of temptation this kind of temptation God never causes never causes this kind of temptation the other kind of temptation there's dispute about that but this is something that God never does let's read that verse again let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man neither tempteth he any man <laughs> that's extremely important doctrine and it's something that you should be able to teach other people right in verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust you as a person have lust in you have you ever wondered why you sin there is lustful desires within your desires and those desires cause you to perform 
things against the will of God. Unbelief is one of them. Unbelief is a sin and it's caused by the lust inside of a person. Now was it God that placed that lust inside of you? Teaching such a horrible doctrine is against Scripture. That's not what Scripture teaches. God does not provide lust unto mankind. Let's read this verse again and see whether this lust ever belonged to God. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And so, there is a death that is brought forth when a saved person sins. So, what happens with that death? Does that death mean that you're going to go to hell? It doesn't. Why? Why? Because there is this new creation within you. The death works with the law inside your members. And so your members eventually pass away. Your body dies. And the death is also addressed by the work of the cross. And you will sometimes feel it when you perform a transgression, when you sin against the Holy God, the Almighty God, your Father. When you sin against Him, it will feel almost like something inside you dies. It's a horrible thing when a person sins. So the verse is completely correct, saying that when a sin is finished, it brings forth death. We as Christians should learn how to despise sin as much as we despise death. So in the next verse, we receive one of the greatest summaries of how to live a sanctified life. Verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Do not err, my beloved brethren. Don't sin once. Obviously, that's advice, good advice, but it's a different situation in trying to perform this good advice. And you have to love the apostles for this. They challenge us so deeply. They challenge us in such wonderful ways. And it's an encouragement to see people live such righteous lives that they are able to challenge us in that way. And so, seeing that they lived such righteous lives, it encourages us to follow in their footsteps. Let us honor God for sending us these men to give us such guidance and give us the effort that they performed. Obviously, the Holy Spirit did all the work with regards to inspiring the scripture but having these words is almost like having the apostles as friends also what a friend have we in Jesus all our sins and cares to bear having God as a friend is great encouragement in our times in our times <clears throat> do not err my beloved brethren Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Aren't we so glad that God never changes? He's always with us. He always preserves. He always encourages. He always stands for truth. And He always will be there at the end. We have eternal hope that cannot change because the work of Jesus 
cannot be taken away. We have an eternal hope that comforts and gives a person great encouragement. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He has a purpose. He will perform it. He will be faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. We are begotten by God. This was through the work of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. When He paid the price on the cross, He shed His blood. His blood achieved and paid and made the atonement. And His resurrection brought forth our justification. And we are fortunate, justified souls by the work of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. And so when we accepted the Lord Jesus as our precious Savior, we were born anew. We had a birth, a spiritual birth. We had a birth with water when we were very young. Came out of the womb of our mothers along with a lot of water. But now we have a spiritual birth. We are born of the Spirit. And it was the work of God. God begat us. And being spiritual creatures within ourselves, the spirituality is uncorruptible and can never be accused of a dooming sin. And yet we still perform evil works in our flesh. Thank goodness that what we do with our flesh is independent from what we do in our spirit. And so we are very fortunate that we will be judged by the law of liberty one day judged by the works of the new creature, the spirituality that is within us. And obviously, this spiritual creature within us was created unto good works. We are created unto good works. Woe unto the Christian that does not do good works, for he will truly miss out on a crown like we saw earlier in verse 12. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits. We were begotten by the word of truth. The word of truth was spread throughout the whole world. The special message of what Jesus did for us on the cross and the law that convicted mankind knowing that they needed a savior and so they accepted the savior so many people have accepted the savior so many people haven't and so when they accepted this word of truth of jesus the salvation from the damnation that the law has caused upon our sinful souls now the word of truth is our salvation and has revived us where previously we were dead and had no hope. But when we received the word of truth, we realized, wow, what a beautiful Savior. What a beautiful thing that He did for us on the cross. And so the beauty of the gospel was manifested. God giving man an opportunity to show love and man saying, I will love this Jesus who died for me on the cross. Aren't we thankful that God doesn't make us robots and doesn't force us to believe? He gives us the freedom to decide. He wants our love towards Him to be spontaneous. Would it be love if He just made us love Him? Would it be love if He just made us believe? If you had a wife and she had a button on her forehead which you could press making her love you, why would you ever press that button? Why would you make your wife love you? You want to know what's in her heart. 
you want to know if she in and of herself cares about you. It would be truly sad if she didn't really care about you, but you simply press the button the whole time to make her love you. God is not like this. With God, things are much simpler, much more beautiful. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The first fruits in the Bible they are always important because they belong to God. We are fortunate to be in Jesus Christ because now we belong to God. We are the first fruits of His creatures. He always had in mind that people should be saved by grace through faith one day. He always had in mind that people should be saved simply by believing in what Jesus did for them. This is the only gospel that ever pleased God so much. Never has there ever been a gospel like this. It is a beautiful gospel that came into being the moment Jesus was resurrected from the grave and He is glorified in that gospel. Before God laid the foundation of the world, He was excited about this gospel that was going to be, this gospel that was going to provide salvation unto all mankind, this glorious gospel that would secure people and give them an everlasting hope, a hope that nobody can take away from them, a hope that nobody can make them uncertain about, a hope that lasts forever and ever and ever, the moment you believed in Jesus Christ, you were sealed and secured and you have received eternal security. You will go to heaven, not because you deserve it, but because Jesus died for you on the cross. Nobody can ever, ever, ever take that away from you. You should love God and honor God and worship God for what He did for you on the cross. He is your everlasting hope and salvation. He is your everlasting consolation. He is our beautiful Savior. May we sing to His name and lift Him on high for all eternity. Amen. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We are creatures of God now. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. There is a new creature living inside of you, you are that new creature. Don't succumb to the enticement of these sinful devils that want to lead you astray, tempting you. Reject the words of the devil. Live out the spiritual reality that you are. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of God that you have received, believing on Jesus Christ. It is the righteousness of God that should live in you and live through you. Your own righteousness is as filthy rags. Live with the righteousness of God. Let that live inside of you and live through you. Verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. The word has provided unto us a beautiful gospel that we will go to heaven not because we deserve it, but because Jesus died for us on the cross, 
this engrafted word is received by all of us who believe on Jesus Christ. But you shouldn't just receive it in a carnal manner. You shouldn't just receive it in the worldly manner. Receive this word without filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Now that you are in Jesus Christ, live out your life in meekness. Live out your love for the engrafted word of God with honor towards God. Let us not only be meek for a week, but meek for our all lives. For it is only proper that the engrafted word should be received and lived out in such a manner. Aren't we fortunate that such a simple word, such a simple engrafted word can provide eternal salvation? May we honor God always for his engrafted word that provided salvation unto us. And so this is also good advice for you if you want to share the gospel with somebody else. Make sure to share the engrafted word with him. Show him scripture. Let him learn the beauty of scripture. Let scripture save his soul. Because in scripture it tells of a beautiful savior that came and humbled himself, gave himself, suffered himself to shed blood for our transgressions, for our shortcomings. May we always honor him for that. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You are a new creature in Christ. See, let's say, this is the hand of the new creature in Christ. Should this hand, which is the hand of the new creature in Christ, perform sin? No, it shouldn't. And it doesn't. It's uncorruptible. But it, being your hand, being your member, you're using it to perform sin. Using that which has no sin to perform that which is sin. This should not be, brethren. You're not looking at what your hand is supposed to be. You're ignoring the truth of what your hand is. You should stop deceiving yourself. Now that you are in Jesus Christ, you are much more than that. You are much more than a worldly corrupted worm. You are a son of God now. You are a child of God now. The Spirit crieth within you, Abba, Father. How can you live a life of unrighteousness? Verse 22, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Stop deceiving your own selves, brethren. Live the righteous life that God has made you to be. You're a new creature now. That creature is going to heaven. You are going to heaven, not because you deserve it. Jesus paid the price for you on the cross. What a beautiful salvation. What a precious gift. What a beautiful thing that we have gained through his work on the cross. A precious salvation that cannot compare with anything else in this world.